2009 Toyota Corolla with the 1.8 liter. I'm doing the front brakes. First, if you just have the hubcap, you want to get the hubcap off. Something like this to just kind of get behind it a little bit and pry it off a little bit. Don't get too wild with it because you could break your hubcap. And then we got a 21 millimeter lug nuts. I got my 21 millimeter socket here. I'm going to go ahead and get this off. Um, obviously, make sure your vehicle is jacked up and you have jack stands and safe. You know, you don't want to get hurt or maimed doing something stupid like Corolla brakes. So once we got the wheel off and we're good and safe, I'm going to be doing the rotors and the pads both. Um, we got to take this caliper bracket bolt off right here i'm only going to take the bottom one off and i'll show you why it's a 14 millimeter and uh, if you just get the 14 on the bottom off you can slide the top one out so get this off and also side note sometimes this nut on the other side will spin if it does spin on you just hold it with some pliers or a wrench and then loosen the caliper bolt that's how you deal with that uh, so set that aside don't lose it and we're gonna try to lift this up this is it's probably going to be stubborn on you because these, these cars are getting older by now. Might be a little stubborn. I had to use a little pry bar to pry it up. Get this up, and I'm just going to slide straight backwards. And then this sometimes this boot wants to stick on here. Just take your fingers and pull it down like this. No problem. Yeah, it's got some buildup of corrosion and whatnot. Once we slide this out, I'm going to gently set it over the steering knuckle like that to support the brake line. And to keep the caliper out the way so it's not swinging down and hitting us or doing nothing like that. Okay, so here's my brake pads. These are aftermarket brake pads that are on here. I'm going to be putting Toyota OEM ones on. Notice there has a little sensor spring on top. And then it has shims on it. If you get aftermarket pads, they'll have shims on them. Um, I have Toyota pads, so I had to buy Toyota shims. I'll show you what I mean in a sec. But yeah, notice these springs are on top. And the reason why that is is because um, it's for going in reverse. I'll show you in, in a little bit. Uh, let's get our rotor bracket bolts off these are a 17 millimeter uh, these are going to be a little harder to get off than the caliper bolt um, they're going to be tight but they're tight for a reason so it's a very important bolt so we'll get these loose and these are longer as well so it'll take a little longer if you have like a electrical or air tools this is where that those come in handy but uh i'm just using a ratchet for now i got a, a ratcheting ratchet I'll throw links in the description for all these parts and maybe some tools too, so, so check that out. Okay, I got that out, and we're going to slide the rotor bracket off. Set this to the side for now. Okay, that, that's chilling over there. I'm going to put my bolts over here. Don't lose any of your bolts. Keep them together. And then I'm going to take this rotor off. This rotor has served an honorable life, but we're going to get a new one. All right. So I got my new one here. <clears throat> this is from uh, O'Reilly's. Here's the part number for brake select. Uh, they're okay rotors. You know, especially for a car like this, you don't need to go all luxury out on rotors. But sometimes these come with packaging grease on them. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it protects it from rust or something, but I always clean it off with brake cleaner. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I always spray these down if they have any kind of grease or packaging, whatever on it. Uh, get, clean it off. Make it completely dry with the brake cleaner. And, uh, and then I'll put it on the car. Again, uh, links in the description for parts and tools, so check that out. All right, let's put this on. It just slides right on there. And uh, okay, so let's get let's prep the bracket. So what I do is I get a wire brush, and I'll just clean all the gunk out of this hardware. Your new pads may come with hardware, especially if you get the uh, aftermarket ones that I'm going to link. They come with hardware, but if you don't have to put it in. Uh, what is important though is to take the slide pin out, wipe it off, maybe clean it a little bit, um, and then put lube on this and stick it back in the hole there. I use Seal Glide. I've been using this for like 10 years. I've never had an issue with it. It's good stuff. Um, what I'll do is I'll uh, maybe I'll put some in here, just a little tad bit. If you do a lot, you're gonna you're gonna cause yourself issues because if you put too much, then air is gonna get stuck in there and your caliper pin won't slide down. So just barely any, maybe put a little tiny coat on the slide pin. And then we're just going to carefully push this guy in. Sometimes they can be stubborn. Sometimes you got to take it out and put it back in, take it out, put it back in, and, and kind of just work it. Make sure it can just move up and down like this. Just like that. That's all it needs to do. On both, And then the other side is uh, on the caliper still. So uh, sometimes if you need to get a wire brush, you can put a wire brush on a drill and just go in here and just spin and clean out all the rust and whatever buildups in there and then spray it out with brake cleaner or... or you know, whatever, and then go in there and do it again. I've had to do that on, like, East Coast cars. 
All right, anyway, so this is good. Let's put it back on the rotor. And then I'll put my two 17 millimeter bolts back in. We'll go ahead and tighten those down. Uh, torque specs, rotor specs, everything is going to be at the end of the video. I'll, I'll have that for you, torque wrench guys. I always get lit up in the comments about torquing and stuff. Yes, I torque these off camera. Um, here's my brake pads. These are Toyota. Um, so the new Toyota pads don't come with shims. I had to get the shim kit separate. If you have Toyota pads on the car, which may not be likely at this point in time because this car is so old, you can switch your old Toyota shims over to your new Toyota pads. However, I got Toyota pads. I got new shims, so I'm going to put them together. If you go down this route, I'm going to show you. All you do is you just put a little tiny bit of grease on these pads, and then you put your black shim down first. Black one on each side. <clears throat> and then um, and then you'll put your silver shim on the top right here. Uh, they don't sell the shims on Amazon. You have to get them like from Toyota, I believe. Uh, you can get the Toyota pads from Amazon, but not the shims. So <clears throat> just know what you're going to do before you uh, start working. Is If you're going to do this. The, the aftermarket pads I'm going to link are good pads. They're the Evolution pads. Super good aftermarket pads. I, I would. That's the only ones I use. Um, and then we put our little spring on right here. This is like a dual. It's like a spring and a brake sensor. So it goes like this. And then, of course, these little sensor springs go on top. And the reason why is because when you go in reverse, your pads shift up. And then these just are there to make it so it doesn't make that shifting noise. When it goes click, click. I don't know if you ever heard that in a car. Um, I put a little bit of seal glide on the edges of the pads just so they slide in there easier. That's what it looks like. All right. No big deal. And then we'll put this in. Just kind of, I'm gonna just give you guys a little bit of a close up because sometimes people get confused on how these go in. But I'm gonna try to get the best camera shot I can. But they're just going like this. Um, they could be a little annoying, so just be patient. Get them in correctly, and then we'll go ahead and get the back one in. Same way. Just goes in those holes right there. Boom. All right. Now we got our caliper. We need to compress the piston we need to push this piston back into the housing that way when you put your caliper back on you'll have plenty of room also i'm going to clean up this slide pin right here i'm gonna do it off camera not to be like i don't want to be boring and repetitive um this is my caliper piston tool i'll link this in the description and uh, another cheaper one but this is i've been using this one for also for about 10 years and it's pretty good always gets the job done all right and then you just push this little black part on the back to release it. And that's pushed in. And then I cleaned up my pin. Put a little seal glide on it. And clean both of these spots up. And then uh, I'm going to slide this in. Just like this. Alright, and then I'll just slowly kind of get it over these pads. Sometimes you got to kind of move them back and forth to get it over. Push this pin in, in on the bottom if it's in your way. Do that, and then we'll put our caliper bolt in right here. All right, tighten that down. Got this tightened down. And uh, that's pretty much it, guys. Just do the same thing for the other side. Uh, you could you could hold this if it's spinning on you to tighten the nut down or the bolt down. Make sure, make sure all these bolts on this brake job are tight. You don't want to kill yourself. Make sure your brake line isn't twisted. It's easy to twist these and have brake issues. And that's it, guys. So I hope this video helped you out. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you next video. He's on to get the light. Hey, what's up, guys? I want to tell you about this new soap I've been using by a new company called Quantum Soap. It's a men's soap company. They make multiple different bars of soap with their own ingredients and fragrance. They even have a dark matter bar, which is more grittier. If you're a mechanic, you have a lot of dirt and oil in your skin a lot. You can reach them at quantumsoapco.com. Free shipping on orders over $50. These soaps are made in the U.S. with all natural ingredients by hand. No synthetic this, synthetic that. Um, they've been great. They've hooked us up with a Guillermo Auto promo code. So if you head over to the website, type in Guillermo Auto in the checkout, you'll get 10% off. Again, uh, these guys are on Facebook, Instagram. Check them out. Check the links below. Thanks for watching.